Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we return to the world of Resident Evil Village as we take a look at the story for its latest DLC chapter, Shadows of Rose. In order to gain a full understanding of the events that transpire in this new chapter of Resident Evil, I would recommend checking out my Story Explained videos for both Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil Village. I'll leave links to those videos at the end of this one. With that said, sit back, relax, and let's wrap up for Winter's Saga in today's Story Explained video. The story of Shadows of Rose picks up 16 years after the events of Resident Evil Village in the year 2037. Rosemary Winters is now a teenager and has been raised under the custody of the US government, with Chris Redfield taking over Ethan's role as a surrogate father figure. In this time, it seems Rose has been given very limited access to her mother Mia, and hasn't seen her in a very long time. She gained superpowers from a mutamycete inside her, a strand of mould passed down to her from her late father Ethan after he was infected during the events of Resident Evil 7. These superpowers have ostracised her from society, with other children labelling her as a freak. These experiences have left Rose feeling traumatised and reluctant to interact with others. She desperately wishes to rid herself of her superpowers at any cost, and on this day it appears she has been given the chance to do so. Dion K. Wilson, a member of the BSAA working under the command of Chris Redfield, meets with Rose and invites her back to their lab, where a fragment of the Megamycete's fungal root has been archived, taken from the village before Ethan destroyed the Megamycete during the finale of the original story. This root fragment stores the collected consciousness of the Megamycete's victims within, and Kay explains that by interacting with it, Rose may be able to strip herself of her unwanted powers. You already know about Miranda and the Mutamycete, how she researched it obsessively and performed experiments on human subjects. Like me. Exactly. Uh, what you don't know is that we recently found some of her research Apparently, she discovered a purifying crystal that can remove the mutamycete from its host. Purifying crystal? If we can get our hands on one of these, we might be able to weaken or remove your powers entirely. Are you kidding me? After Rose reaches out, she is consumed by the megamycete fragment and drawn inside the realm of consciousness within. Here, the memories of those who once inhabited the village with a connection to the Megamycete live on as twisted copies of their former selves, and Rose's own trauma is brought to life before her very eyes. When Rose awakens, the lab seems very different, and Kay is nowhere to be seen. The exit leads not into BSAA headquarters, but rather into the depths of Castle Dimitrescu. Here, Rose encounters a replica of herself, who seems to be distressed and desperate to escape the castle dungeon. It isn't long before this copy of Rose is consumed by a new enemy type, a monster known as the Face Eater. These creepy figures latch onto anyone unfortunate enough to cross their path and drain the life force from them transforming their victims into another wretched face-eater, who is then cursed to forever wander the halls of the Realm of Consciousness. Rose also discovers a collection of other replicas, who all meet this horrifying fate. Escaping upstairs, she soon finds herself in the main castle, where a familiar character returns. Looks like we caught another! Lively now, aren't you? You should have put that effort into running. It would have made the chase that much more thrilling. Uh, let me go! Let me go! It would seem this little rabbit lacks the necessary fortitude. Uh, uh, A pity. While the Duke was an ally to Ethan in the story of Village, in this nightmare realm he is simply a sinister memory, a masked puppeteer under the control of the Megamycete, who preys on the many Rose clones trapped within this world. 
He also guards the item Rose is looking for, a purifying crystal which has the power to drain Rose of her supernatural abilities and transform her into a regular teenage girl. The Masked Duke also commands an army of face eaters, led by a powerful brute which he has dubbed the Hound. These enemies stalk Rose through the castle as she searches for three masks which will unlock the cage securing the purifying crystal. And so Rose's quest for purification begins. As Rose makes her way through this realm, she encounters a mysterious guiding force, a voice of sorts who writes on walls throughout this realm, imparting both words of encouragement and wisdom to aid her on her quest. What... What are you? Okay... What were those things? What is happening here? Not until I get this out of my body. There's a crystal here that will remove the mold. I, I need to find it. Who are you? My guardian angel? Do you have a name? If you're an angel, then... Gabriel? Michael? Okay, Michael, what now? This voice calls themselves Michael and acts as a guardian angel. Though Rose is suspicious of them at first, she quickly warms to Michael's kind nature and follows his guidance. Following Michael's words helps Rose navigate the maze-like castle and begin acquiring flasks, these flasks are familiar to anyone who remembers Ethan's journey in Resident Evil Village. They were the very flasks that once contained fragments of Rose as a child before Ethan returned her to her human form. Interacting with these flasks amplifies Rose's powers and grants her new abilities, key to surviving this realm. With these powers, she is able to combat the Face Eaters and fight back using a selection of weaponry she collects as she explores. After a few close calls with the Masked Duke, his Hound and the Face Eater army, Rose collects up all three masks and places them on the trio of statues, unlocking the cage and procuring the coveted Crystal of Purification. However, she quickly learns that this crystal is a replica and has been used as bait for the Duke to ensnare her in his trap. Did you really think I'd give away something so precious? I had to bait the trap with something. No! No! <laughs> the Duke challenges Rose to a final showdown with the Hound. Here Rose manages to enhance her powers even further through the collection of another flask, and after a hard fought battle, defeats the Duke's champion. Angered, the masked Duke begins to throw everything he can at Rose in order to annihilate her once and for all. But Michael comes to her rescue, guiding Rose to an opening in the castle wall which leads into a dark abyss and telling her to jump. This void leads deeper into the Megamycete consciousness and out of the Duke's reach, but new dangers abound in these murky depths. The next layer of the Realm of Consciousness takes place deeper within the village, based around the grounds of House Beneviento, the creepy lair of Dollmaker Donna Beneviento. Upon entering the Dollmaker's house, it quickly becomes apparent that the theme for this area of Rose's consciousness is centred around her childhood trauma. Rose is forced to recreate staged events from her elementary school days, where the other children ridiculed and bullied her for her supernatural abilities. Rose seeks out doll figurines and places them on miniature sets which depict traumatic memories from her past. After being forced to confront her bullies, she then runs into a collection of living mannequins which represent her estranged mother Mia. These mannequins are in fact replicas of the very same one Ethan once dissected during his own journey through the dollhouse. The mannequins chase Rose as she seeks out a power cell to get the elevator back in working order. If she takes her eyes off her wooden pursuers for even a second, they quickly advance on her position, ready to strike. 
Returning to the elevator, Rose escapes deeper into the memories of the old house, and to her horror, steps out into an illusionary reality. Rose has shrunk down and the dolls and rooms have grown in size. She is now a human doll within a giant house. Entering stealth mode, she begins sneaking past hordes of bloodthirsty living dolls and giant mannequins, who all seek to consume her into the Mega Mycete consciousness. This all culminates in a sequence where Rose's childhood trauma catches up with her, as she is ridiculed by the dolls before being forced to make a break for the exit as the mold consumes her surroundings. No one likes Rose, because she's a free. Hey! She has those crazy powers. What? Just like her dad. That's why she doesn't have any friends. Shut up! You know it's true. What is wrong with her? As Rose runs from the mold consuming the dilapidated halls of House Beneviento, Michael returns to guide her to safety. She emerges into a setting that feels somewhat familiar, and here some long forgotten memories begin to return. Rose vaguely remembers this house as the one she spent the first six months of her life inside. While she was just a baby, by examining various items found throughout the Winters family home, she is able to recall certain events and strengthen her bond with her father, Ethan. She just cannot get enough of this stuff. What's that voice? Is that... Dad? This must be my parents' house from when I was a baby. I bet other things also have my dad's memories. Happy half birthday, Rose. My gift to you is a promise. I'll always be there for you, no matter what. I'll be there every birthday to watch you blow out the candles on your cake. I'll be there to make you breakfast and walk you to school every day. I'll be there when you have a bad dream and sing to you until you fall back asleep. I'll hug you tight when you're troubled or worried and tell you that everything's gonna be all right. You are my precious Rose. Never forget that, Dad. After reading a rather touching letter from Ethan written just before the tragic events that transpired during the story of Village, Rose is ambushed by an insidious memory from Ethan's past, a copy of Evelyn. For those who don't remember, Evelyn was the little girl from the story of Resident Evil 7. Desperate for a mother figure, she latched onto Mia and ferociously fought anyone who tried to separate them, even Mia's own husband, Ethan. While Evelyn was defeated during the final moments of that game, her consciousness lives on as part of that collected within the Megamycete hive mind. Evelyn hates Rose as she received the love and kindness from Mia that she was never granted. No one loves you, and when you're dead, no one will care! <laughs> Under the guidance of Michael, Rose manages to fight back against Evelyn and weaken her, though the molded child retains enough power to strike out at Rose when it seems she has been beaten. Just as Rose is about to be destroyed, the shadow of a familiar man leaps out to save her, pushing Rose through a door and deeper into the consciousness of the Mega Mycete. Rose awakens on the outskirts of the village overlooking the Mega Mycete hive mind at its centre. She fights her way through the village and over to a sinkhole, where in the cavernous ruins below, a horrifying truth is revealed. Hundreds of Rose copies hang from the centre of the Mega Mycete, and beneath them a lab is located containing a selection of research notes from none other than Mother Miranda. Miranda was a biologist and cult leader who presided over the Four Lords during the story of Resident Evil Village, and wished to use baby Rose as a vessel to revive her lost daughter Eva, after her first experiment with Evelyn had failed. Rose was the perfect host to revive Miranda's lost child, but thanks to Ethan's valiant efforts, her plan failed once more. After her death, Miranda lived on as part of the Mega Mycete's collected consciousness, and over the past 16 years, continued her deranged experiments. 
trying to recreate Rose within the realm of consciousness so her mission could finally come to fruition. However, the Rose clones were not satisfactory. Miranda eventually realised that she required the original to bring back Eva. In order to trap the real Rose within this realm, Miranda worked on a way to transcend the Megamycete's consciousness and enter Rose's mind in the real world, creating an illusionary version of Kay who would entice her to merge with the realm of consciousness with the promise of dispelling her powers. This plan worked, and now Rose is exactly where Mother Miranda wants her. Rose leaves the lab and discovers the location of a purification crystal. Finally, her journey has reached its conclusion, and upon picking up the crystal, her superpowers are drained and she is able to get her first taste of what it feels like to be a normal girl. Unfortunately, this is exactly what Miranda had hoped for. Now drained of her powers, Rose is vulnerable and open to attack. But just as all hope seems lost, Ethan returns to save his daughter from Miranda's hold. No way. Now you can become the vessel for my Eva! As Rose and Ethan run for their lives, he reveals that he has in fact been Michael, her guardian angel, this entire time. The two team up and escape the caverns, finding themselves in a crystallised clearing just outside the village. Here, Mother Miranda confronts them and Ethan wrestles with her in order to buy time for his daughter to escape. Hearing her father's agonising screams, Rose is spurred on to fight back and so smashes the crystal, regaining her old powers and some new ones in the process. Think your powers will allow you to stand against me in the heart of my domain. Uh, foolish. Ah! Look how intent you were on my throwing them away. I think they just might. you do this? What is this? You just won't give up. You really are. <laughs> that sun that shines inside <laughs> makes you perfect best. After a long battle, Mother Miranda uses the last of her power to summon an unstoppable barrage of attacks. In this moment, Ethan, wounded and beaten from his run-in with the witch, offers up his powers to Rose. She consumes her father's energy and is then finally able to vanquish the Wicked Witch once and for all. In the aftermath of this destruction, Rose manages to speak with her father one last time and finally get to know the parent she never had. All you've ever done is protect me. No. Not this time. You lost your chance. I'm so sorry. No. It was my choice. And I don't regret it one bit. If I had left you, then we never would have had this chance to talk face to face. I'm so very proud of you. I love you, Rose. I love you too, Dad. Rose then awakens in the real world. While she didn't manage to rid herself of her Mutamycete powers, she has now found a way to accept them and, in doing so, accept who she is. Her nightmarish trip through the realm of consciousness wasn't in vain though. Rose discovered who her father really was and was given the chance to say goodbye. This ending then ties directly into the one we first witnessed during the final moments of Village, as we see Rose taking the bus to deliver a bouquet of flowers to Ethan's grave. 
though her visit is cut short when a government agent arrives to pick her up for assignment. It seems as though Rose will be working with Blue Umbrella and her new mentor Chris Redfield, helping with their continued fight against biomutation and using her powers to protect the world from the nefarious forces still at play. But the memory of Ethan will always be with her, as we see his silhouette walking beside her during this final, poignant shot. And with that, we've come to the end of this look at the story of Shadows of Rose. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, then remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.